Well, we're on today's podcast today. So we're going to be taking a look at doctrine, uh, teaching. What do we believe? Why do we believe in it? This is the second uh, of, of a set of podcasts on this topic. Um, yeah, so I played back the one we did yesterday on doctrine. I thought there was a few things that would be appropriate to add. So I'm now looking at the Westminster Confession of Faith from 1647, um, 374 years ago, how about that? Uh, and largely it is correct. Um, so we're just going to scan through some of the first one. There's 33 articles. Um, we're not going to look at them all. We're just going to scan through um, some of the first sort of uh, half of them, I would say. Um, it's very interesting that the first sort of uh, 17 or so, or well, the first 18, I suppose, are, are, are the vital ones, I suppose, and the rest follow on from that. So we're just going to skip through some of them. Again, please feel free to put anything in the comments. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see on these podcasts, put that in the chat below. If indeed you'd like to appear on one of these, reach out to me in the conversation. Now, yesterday and, and in almost all the podcasts, I speak of the authority of Scripture, the sovereignty of the Word of God that sustains the planet, being an expression in all creatures at the present moment of the air in the ocean and upon the earth and underneath the earth, the nature of Elohim Yahweh in full expression, His Majesty, the King of the Universe. So I speak of the authority accuracy and the inerrancy of scripture uh, on all the podcasts so we think we've thoroughly covered that and just worthy of mention i suppose again is i did a series of three podcasts on psalm 119 which is the longest chapter uh, and of course the longest psalm in the whole bible and there's much in there about the word of god the word of truth the life giving light giving sustaining life of elohim Yahweh which is in every mortal, the life behind, the behind thine eyes. Here, can I? So, um, we often speak of the personage of the Godhead, the three persons, and yet the one person, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord, uh, Ephesians 4, 6, God is one. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our own image. Jehovah and his Redeemer, Jehovah. Yahovah said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies the footstool of thine feet the triunity of the godhead three yet one yet three so by all means friends pause this video and check out those scriptures on the screen yourselves check everything with scripture um Elohayim Yahweh from eternity by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will freely and unchangeably ordaineth whatsoever comes to pass. Elohim Yahweh appoints presidents, prime ministers, kings and queens. This whole creation is entirely subject to Elohayim Yahweh. There is nothing in subject. Everything is creature possession. The Lord Jesus Christ, by his sufferings, death, resurrection, ascension, exaltation, and sovereign dominical power, presently rules over all nations and all mortals, an entire, unchallengeable dominical sovereignty, the King and Lord of the whole planet. Elohim Yahuwah immutably and unchangeably ordaineth whatsoever comes to pass. Yet so, God is not the author of sin, but the author of life. The devil is the author of sin, 
the wicked, iniquitous, wily, vile, devile, the cursed, doomed, damned, deluded demon, soon to be thrust into the bottomless abyss for a thousand earth years, whereupon he will be released for a short time and then go into the fiery, sulfurious, brimstonian, contemptuous fire. The lake of fire awaits him, and there the smoke of his torment will ascend forevermore before the throne of God. Amen. God is the author of life, the author of peace, the author of salvation. So again, friends, there's a lot here about the decrees of Elohim Yahuwah, the sovereignty of Elohim Yahuwah. Feel free to, to pause and to check out these things. Of creation, it pleased the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit to manifest glory, eternal power, these deem the goodness, righteousness, holiness, equity, faithfulness, bliss, and eternal perfection through every creature. Yea, verily, verily, friends, there is more wonder and more greatness and more glory in one sparrow than all the Apache helicopters, all the battleships, all the cars and the engines, all the motorcycles, all the homes, all the furniture, all the iPads and telephones and computers on the planet combined. One little sparrow, friends. When you see a sparrow, friends, you will neither be able to tell me where it has come from or where it is going. Yet it knows. A little sparrow has a heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, blood vessels, arteries, capillaries. It has skin, feathers. And friends, that one little sparrow can even fly. Oh, yes. Not one sparrow lands on the ground or takes off from the ground without your heavenly father. Foragers, reproduces, builds homes, raises young. And behold, how many sparrows are there, friends? The fish of the sea. How many different types of fish are in the sea, friends? How many living creatures are in the sea right now, friends? A billion? A hundred billion? And there they all are, friends. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. Billions and billions and billions of living creatures in the ocean. Completely independent of men. Completely independent of mankind. You'll never see a man standing on the seashore feeding the fish. Oh, I've got to feed these fish. Oh, yes, I've got to look after the fish. No, friends. Elohim, Yahuwah, sustains all the fish of the ocean right now. Hundreds of thousands of different varieties. Probably millions of different varieties, friends. And there they are right now. The expression of the nature, will, purpose and greatness of El Hayayim. Yahweh. The creator of all things doth uphold, direct, dispose and govern all creatures, actions and things, from the greatest even to the least. Now, friends, yesterday we looked at Ephesians chapter 1, one of the greatest chapters uh, discussing predestination uh, and sovereignty. Elohim Yahuwah works all things according to the counsel of his own will. He has predestined you, friends, to be listening to this message. You have been predestined, chosen. Oh, yes, Elohim Yahuwah fits men and women in his body, in his bride, in his church, in his redeemed. Church means congregation, friends. There's only one congregation. There's only one church, friends. You can think what you like. There's only one church upon this planet, and that is the Lamb's wife, the bride, the redeemed. That one woman, 
the pearl of great price, the treasure in the field. Christ Jesus the Lord is the good shepherd. He is good the sheep herd. Every man, woman and child upon the sphere. Filling heaven and earth right now, friends. The rock of ages, the ancient of days. The stone cut out of the mountain without hands that comes into the world, becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet right now, friends. The Lord Jesus Christ, the king of the whole planet, the ruler of nations, the judge of the whole earth, the eternal sovereign manifest in flesh. All things are creature possessions, friends. Through the blood, Christ has purchased everything judicially. Everything has been judicially dealt with in Christ, friends. Every man, woman and child that's ever walked this planet has been judicially dealt with at the cross, friends. Everyone was dead. No human being likes to think of themselves as being dead. But friends, as regards eternal life, what pertains at the present time upon the earth is hardly that. And yet life itself is the life of Elohim Yahweh, which is, of course, eternal. Yes, friends, these are mysteries. One could speak for hours on these topics. His Majesty Elohim Yahweh, in full expression throughout all creation, from the dawn of time till the present moment, friends. And there he was, the rock of ages, held upon the tree by the iron e nails. All the irony, the irony of it, friends. The creator, the holy one of Israel, the sovereign of the universe, the maker and sustainer of all things. Oh, yes, the mystery of it. A man extended upon a cursed tree. The head of all earth's family has cleansed all of thee. He assuredly doeth. Oh, yes. Only one man had standing that day, friends. Only one man has standing this day, friends. Only one man has standing, friends. And it's the man who stood that day upon the tree for all of thee. He assuredly doeth. Only one man had standing. And yet there was nowhere for the sole of his feet upon a cursed earth, friends. Human beings don't like to think of themselves as cursed, but ye are cursed with a curse, mankind. Oh yes, the curse is still upon the earth. The devil is the curse, friends, the oppressor of men. Oh yes, the earth is accursed. Mankind is accursed. And yet, friends, in the one who became a curse, in the Saviour, in the King, in the Lord Jesus Christ, is plenteous and bounteous and superabundant redemption. For all of thee, he assuredly doeth. In the great King Jesus Christ is forgiveness, reconciliation, eternal life, deliverance, strength, and joy. Joyous bliss for all of Earth's family friends. A state of grace thou art preserved in. Think of that one woman going away by the deceived, deluded, doomed, damned demon. And then that woman herself becoming deceived. What do those that are deceived do, friends? Well, the deceived are deceivers. 
and they go around deceiving. That's the unfortunate condition of mankind, friends. Think about it, friends. What proceeds from your mouths day by day. The Lord Jesus said, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much rather shall your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those that ask of him? Oh yes, friends, the depravity of sin and the greatness of eternal love and grace. Come, come, let us proceed to have a look at doctrine. The fall of man, the depravity of man, the wretchedness of humans. Well, every man knows his own wretchedness, friends. The temptations of Shatan, the adversary, the doomed, deluded demon. Well, hell is very well populated, friends. And yet hell nor its gates can prevail against Christ Jesus the Lord. A great king, a great saviour, the head of every man, the king of nations. God's covenant with man, covenantial and providential loving kindnesses. Well, you read in scripture of many covenants, there was a covenant with Adam, there was the covenant even with Cain, there was the covenant with Noah, there was a covenant with uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 sons of Israel, Jacob, Israel, uh, the covenant with, uh, with Joseph, the covenant uh, with, uh, with and through Moses, the Mosaic law, the commandments, um, the various covenants, the covenant with David, King David, the greatest agreement is the agreement in the Godhead concerning all mankind. Uh, the father's own counsels with himself to, uh, to bring redemption, life, health, peace, mercy, and eternal life to sinners. Oh, yes, friends. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.26. There is nobody righteous, not even one. You must all present yourselves under that tree, friends, where Christ died for all of thee. Shed his blood to redeem thee, to give thee peace, pardon, and power. Friends, you must eat the fruit of that tree. The Lord Jesus said in John 6, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that believeth on me, as the scripture is said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If anyone confess their sins, he is faithful and just to forgive their sins and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ is of infinite value, friends. You cannot quantify the exponential nature of the finished work of eternal redemption. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Christ is able to save completely all those that come to God through him. Christ Jesus, the Lord, is the mediator you want to know uh, about the mediation and the intercession and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as the servant of Jehovah, the servant of God, then friends, uh, read the Psalms. The Psalms are mostly the Psalms of the great King David, who was a great man who lived in Israel uh, 3,000 years ago, thereabouts. Um, and he was the king. Um, he was the judge of Israel. He was the king of Israel. He was the military leader of Israel. He was the provider, the guardian, and the protector of Israel. And in those psalms, you'll see over a hundred psalms. Many of them are hymns. They would be sang with or without instruments. Uh, many of them are prayers. Um, many of them are intercession requests 
and many of them are all of those things. So you will read of, uh, you will read therein of the uh, the Psalms of King David, his conversation with Elohim Yehovah, the Lord God Almighty. You can read therein, friends, a guidance of how thou art to pray in thine prayers, hearkeners. Thou shalt understand uh, the sovereignty, the power, the wisdom, and the greatness of Elohim Yahuwah through reading the Psalms um, for your own personal individual lives. However, the secret side, the divine side, the deeper side is the Psalms are principally intercessory, mediatorial works and conversations in the Godhead concerning thee, dear listener. That's what the Psalms are. They're conversations between the Son and the Father concerning all mankind. So that's where you'll learn about the mediation of Jesus Christ and the book of Hebrews, beloved listeners, the book of Hebrews. And of course, other books, Colossians, Ephesians, uh, Isaiah, you know, in many places. There's many of the men of the Old Testament that were intercessors, uh, mediators, you know. Uh, I mean, Moses was very much uh, a great type of the Lord Jesus Christ, as was King David, as was Joshua. Uh, now. now, the mystery of free will, friends, one could talk for hours on this. Surely every human has free will. Well, it's a very, very deep topic. Um, the reality is that men are responsible for their choices. Uh, men are responsible to walk in the light and revelation knowledge that's given to them. Um, Elohim Yahweh gives knowledge, gives grace, gives light, gives understanding, gives power. Uh, and then requires men and women to walk in the light of this revelation. Um, we may be free to choose, but we're not free of the consequences thereof. Uh, God is not the author of confusion or the author of sin, but the author of life, the author of peace, and the author of salvation. As I say, you can pause these and check out these scriptures. Um, the reality is that scripture talks more about the bondage of the will to Satan and sin more than it does about free will. Um, and also predestination, election, and foreknowledge are clear in scripture. Um, God knowing what men will do and what men won't do before they are born. Now, unfortunately, um, every human being has this sinful nature, that is to say, a nature that has some allegiance with devils, with demons, that is of lust, envy, greed, wickedness, self-exaltation, pride, um, but through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the agonies of Christ, through the sufferings of Christ, through the atoning eternal redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ, men and women find spiritual power through his holy sufferings to be able to endure temptation, to do the next right thing, to walk in power. Uh, men can be sustained and women, of course, whenever I say men, I mean mankind. Uh, mankind can be sustained in a state of gracious, loving kindness and sustenance only through the sufferings of the Son of God. The only reason any human is alive anywhere on this planet is through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the patience of God for all mankind upon the cross that day. Many are called, few are chosen. The outward call of the gospel ought to go to every human being. But the inward calling of Elohim Yahweh through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, only goes to the elect, to the chosen, to those in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Lord Jesus said, nobody, John 6, 44, can come to me unless the Father draws them. And I believe it appears again in John 6, 67, twice in that chapter. Nobody can come to me unless my Father draws them.
justification. Um, Romans 5, 1, therefore having peace with God, we are justified on the principle of faith. And then Galatians 5, 1, um, stand fast therefore in the freedom wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled in a yoke of slavery. Now, I suppose I ought to just speak briefly more about this topic here. I didn't see much. The free will, <clears throat> if you was to check out the book of Romans, particularly, friends, you would learn about the bondage of the will. The Apostle Paul said, that which I don't want to do, I do do. And that which I do do, I, I, don't, I don't want to do. Or, yeah, so, so he, he, he realized the internal strife, the cognitive dissonance, the sinful nature. Um, the good that he wanted to do, he didn't do, and the bad he didn't want to do, he did do. He was aware of the the problem of the sinful nature. Um, and, you know, friends, there's only one thing I can think of in the whole Bible that's the definition of a perfect man. And it's in the book of James. It says a perfect man is a man that does not offend in word. So, in other words, how we speak is very, very important. What we say, what we don't say is very, very, very important. And is the measure of a man. We don't offend with the tongue. And it goes on to say the tongue is a very small part of the body, but it's like the, the wheel that steers a ship, a big ship. And it says the tongue is set on fire by the fires of hell, which is a mystery. God's fury with mankind. God's wrath always has expression. There's only three types of wrath, friends. There's the wrath of the devil, who is doomed, damned, and deluded, and soon to be destroyed permanently, um, continuously. Um, and then there's the wrath of the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of the Lamb. And then there's the wrath of Elohim Yahweh, the wrath of God. The wrath of God, the wrath of Lamb, and the wrath of the devil. No. So scripture talks principally about the bondage of the will, about the sinful nature. However, I will say this. Uh, in Romans 6, you have sin as a master, that is to say, sin reigning. In Romans 7, sin as a tenant. Sin as a tenant. In Romans 8, sin as a prisoner. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, a man or a woman can find freedom, peace, strength, victory, and blessing. Now, through the blood of Jesus, the Father's heart is satisfied concerning you, dear listener. Your heart is cleansed, and you have a place to stand in Christ before God. It's the threefold application of the blood of Jesus. The Father's heart is satisfied. Your heart and mind is cleansed. And you have a place to stand forever before God. That's the reality of positional Christianity, friends. You, have, you are just as if you've never sinned. That's what justification is. You are just. Just as Christ is just, so are you just. That's imputed righteousness, friends. You, friends, are the body of Christ. You are the bride of Christ, the wife of Christ, the redeemed of Christ. You are accepted in the same acceptance of Christ, friends. This is true Christianity. The father bringing the son and his wife to himself, Christ and his bride. justification it's the same justification that christ has in resurrection that's your portion friends friends you are the righteousness of god in jesus christ the principle of adoption adopted children many sons to glory the spirit of the father cries out in you abba father sanctification those that are regenerated having a new heart of flesh and a new spirit, a further made holy sanctification, 
is the process of being made holy and sustained in a state of gracious covenantal and providential mercy. Through virtue of the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ, the dominion of sin is destroyed and the lusts thereof are more and more weakened and mortified. And men and women are more and more made alive and quickened and strengthened in all saving grace. The practice of true holiness, the scripture says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Be ye holy as I am holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now, so holiness, righteousness, faithfulness, and truth becomes our nature and character through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Saving faith, uh, it is by grace alone, through faith alone, through the blood alone, according to scripture alone, that men are sustained and delivered through the will and word of Elohim Yahweh in the covenant of gracious loving kindness. Romans 11.29 um, For the gifts and the callings of Elohim Theos, God, are without repentance or not subject to repentance. So God effectually calls, creates and calls and saves those he has chosen. Whatsoever thing God doeth, he doeth forever, friends. Now, we are saved to good works, friends. We are not saved by good works. That's religion. Catholicism, Mohammedanism, Hinduism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, these kind of belief systems and many others believe that they are saved by good works ultimately. Or some of them will say, well, it's by good works and God's grace. No, 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 no. You are saved by grace through faith alone. No, salvation is by the blood, by the mercy, through the agonies and the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Friends, if you do good things, well and good, do more. What can you do? Who are you helping today? Who are you reaching out to? What can you do? What can you do today to help your fellow man friends? Do it. But you will do it because you have the grace of life. You will do it through the blood atonement. You will do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how you will do it, friends. All things live and move and have their being through and in and for and by and with Elohim Yahweh. Now, that brings us to the conclusion at our glance at the Westminster Confession of 1647. I was going to say 1646. 1647 was when it was completed. Now, so, friends, we're coming towards the end of today's podcast. Um. I want us to just have a quick look at Ephesians 5, the doctrine of the church, the one body, the congregation, the lamb's wife, the redeemed. And here it is. We're now in Ephesians 5. Um, so you have the idea of submission and obedience. So you have all mankind submitting to one another in the reverence of Elohim, reverence of Theos, God. Wives submitting yourselves to your own husbands. And Elohim Yahweh refers to himself as the husband of Israel uh, and that Israel is the wife. Uh, and of course, the church is, is the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, 
and here wives are to submit to their own husbands as unto the Lord. But of course, a quick word to human marriages, not in by way of if there's any abuse or violence, of course, you know what I mean? But generally and severally, if a husband is agreeable to Elohim Yahweh, then the wife is to submit to the husband. Um, the husband is the head of the wife. It goes like this. God, Christ, man, woman. That's it. Man was made first. Woman was made for man, not man made for woman. Headship is male. Women should not be teaching men or trying to usurp authority from men. See, all these women that have been in power like Sturgeon and May and Angela Merkel, that's all a curse upon those nations, friends. That's not a blessing. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, well, we have a woman in authority. Oh, it's just oh, equality and feminine. Just wonderful. No, friends. No, no, no. That's a sign that the nation is under God's judgment. Oh, I, didn't, I don't like well, whether you like it or not, that's a fact. Headship is male. And be glad and rejoice at these things, that that is so, friends. Now, the men have to be strong and do the will of God, not the will of the woman. Oh, but I, oh, I've got to keep my wife happy, you know. Well, that was the first man's problem. The first man was holy, righteous, immortal, uh, and uh, wondrous. And yet he went after that first woman that had gone after the devil. And everyone who has ever lived since has died. The Lord Jesus Christ did not do the will of men or the will of the devil. He did the will of God. And has redeemed all mankind. As typified in that first woman. He has redeemed all mankind, friends. He has redeemed the woman, mankind. Now, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And, you know, friends, human beings get very confused about this word church. Oh, well, church. Oh, well, look at the Church of England. Look at the Catholic Church. Look at this. Look at the... Jehovah's Witness, no, 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 friends, you, you are thinking humanly. Your thinking is too small, friends. Friends, you need to read the scriptures. You do err, you go wrong, human beings. By not reading the scriptures, nor the power of Friends, the scriptures make it clear that there is one church, one bride, one congregation throughout the history and genealogy of this whole planet. There is one congregation, one church, <clears throat> and the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't we need these lines over. Well, there we go. That's it. Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And he is the savior of the body. So in other words, the creation, mankind. That's why it's a physical resurrection, friends. It's a physical. Christianity is physical, actual. Christ physically arose, physically ascended, is physically exalted. Is physically seated at the right hand of God, friends. And your natural bodies will be clothed with immortality, with incorruptibility. Christ is the head of the church. There's only one true church, and that's the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife. And then, of course, you have Savior of the body. There's only one body. So friends, but how can this be? You've got this. Friends, you're thinking humanly. You need to think in accord with the scriptures. Friends, you need to think in accord with the mind of God, not the mind of men. Oh, well, what about this? No, 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 no. It doesn't matter, friends. That's your human opinion. 
the Apostle Paul said, I would have you to all say the same thing and think the same thing. Have the mind of Christ in you. Read the scriptures. There's one church and one body throughout the history of this whole rocky orb. Now, the church is subject to Christ. Right now, the whole church throughout this planet is subject to Christ. Christ is the head, the church is the body. And that's how it is, the head and the body. One Christ, one church, one Lord. Now then, friends, I think we've covered our topics for today. I shall go on to read the rest of this chapter. Do check this out yourselves. Ephesians and Colossians are the high ground in the New Testament doctrinal epistles. And this is the fifth chapter of Ephesians. I shall read it for you. Um, Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Thrust your hand in my side and put your finger in the print of the nails and see it is me. A spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have was said unto Thomas, who doubted. Born of his bones and flesh of his flesh, friends, the head and the body, the saviour of the body, such is the proximity of the Lord Jesus Christ to every human being that belongs to him, that loves him, that worships him, that serves him, that obeyeth him. Verse 31, a great verse. And I say again, friends, we do not get carried away about numbers. But 531, every word of scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for teaching, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 15, friends. But this is Ephesians 5, 3, 1, the grace of the Trinity in one in the Lord Jesus, incarnate deity, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his peace and of the increase of his rule, there shall be no end. He shall reign upon David's throne 
upholding righteousness. Our God shall accomplish this. That's Isaiah 9, 5 and 6, friends. But here we are in Ephesians 5, 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. What does this mean, friends? Well, God the Father and the Holy Spirit, the conception, the inception, the incarnate deity, the holy thing that was born of Mary, the Lord Jesus Christ, the ancient of days incarnate, and the stone cut out the mountain without hands in Daniel 2, the man of Isaiah 9, 5 and 6, the man of Revelation 1, the man of the Gospels, uh, the man of Isaiah, the great King of kings and Lord of lords, the head of every man, the King of nations, incarnate deity. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The Lord Jesus Christ and his wife. The purpose of all creation. One man and one woman. May the face of Elohim Yahweh shine upon you and your families and give you peace in every way, friends, here can us. Until next time, shalom, shalom.